You might hear the clicky clink in my mug. That's because there are ice cubes in it and I have no more water remaining. Today is my favorite day of the week. It is Monday, October 15th, 2012, and this is not a Day 9 Daily. It is not an educational seminar about all things related to StarCraft II. <sighs> no. It is Day 9 story time on Monday where we are going to talk about an amazing game whereby I took the role of a powerful wizard. Today is Magic Monday. I will discuss my first ever Grand Prix experience at the Magic the Gathering Grand Prix San Jose. Yes! Sadly, I have no water. And even though all I have are these tragic two ice cubes, it's still okay because this mug allows me to talk like Bane from Batman. Mr. Wayne, I'm a very powerful wizard. And soon enough, I will tell you a story, Mr. Wayne. Excellent. Go ahead and put slow mode on the chat. Bane 9 will go ahead and take a brief hiatus right now. It's time for us to talk about a little bit of a special game. An exciting news, a recent blog went up on day9.tv. You should check that out. We'll talk about that later. I just wanted to say some other kind of news to let you know that things other than magic are still occurring in the world. All right, let me... Ugh. Let's go ahead and do it. I want to introduce a game called Magic the Gathering to any of you who have played it or perhaps have not played it. It would be weird for me to introduce the game to those of you who had, but that's okay because that's what's going to happen. Now, for some of you who have never heard of Magic the Gathering, let me try to describe it as briefly as I can so that we're all on the same page. Unless you showed up late and you're never going to see this. Here's how magic works. In magic, you are a powerful wizard. And there's someone who's out there who's thinking, no you're not, you're a planeswalker. And to you I say, stop being such a nerd and let me tell you about how you're a powerful wizard, right? You play the role of a powerful wizard. You're trying to kill your opponent who is also a powerful wizard. You have a deck of cards that represents all the spells you will cast. The land that is in that deck provides the resources for you to cast the spells that are in that deck. So a spell might cost three mana, so you need three land cards out there to cast your awesome, powerful spells. Right? Good. All right, we're on the same page. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else really to it than that. Uh, sure, why not? So you have some land that lets you cast the spells. That's your resources. You have the spells themselves. Spells are broken into two basic groups. Creatures, which are dudes you summon to kill the other person. And once you play them, they stay out and they whack away. And the others are one-time spells. Like, zap them and do three damage. <laughs> Got them! What's really exciting is that... Um, there's a million one different cards that can be in your deck. Your deck is almost like the ingredients for your recipe. You can make any sort of recipe you want and all you have to do is make the best recipe and then you are the most powerful wizard of all. Aw, yeah. Now there's, I'm, I'm even seeing in the chat some people talking about, but what about sorceries and artifacts and instants and, 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 and dual ends and what about, look. I know that you know, and I know that I know, kind of. Listen, this is story time. It is important that we embrace all who do not play magic and introduce them to the glory of being a fucking powerful wizard, all right? You don't normally get to do that. Maybe you work a desk job where all you're doing is answering customer support all day long. Sir, did you unplug it and plug it back in? No, do it. Hang up, go home, become a powerful wizard. Good, we're on the same page. So Magic the Gathering has been around for a long, 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 long time. They're always releasing new cards, equivalent to releasing new ingredients for the recipes that can be out there. How many different food dishes can there be? I'm going to say infinity, even though as a mass major, that's not true. 
There's a lot of different recipes you should make, a lot of different decks, a million one ways to play. And what's especially cool is that there's five colors in Magic, where each color requires a land that's the same color. Red land casts red spells, blue land casts blue spells, and all this. The important thing to note is that when you are making your deck, when you're making your little recipe of a spell, each color has some clear weaknesses to it. I don't want to say strengths, I want to say weaknesses, because you might say something like, wow, my red, all the red cards I have are little dudes. They're not very big. That's a weakness I have. There's not really any big red dudes. Let me throw some green in there so I can have some big green dudes. So now I have a red-green deck. I have used green to make up for the weaknesses of red. I've literally told you everything you need to know about Magic the Gathering. So let's go ahead and step away from exposition land, um, or I should say information land, and over to exposition land. There is now ice on the floor of my room. Probably about 10, 11 months ago, I um, was talking to my friend Case on Skype, and Case told me that he was about to fire a draft, and I don't know what that means. It, apparently he was talking about Magic the Gathering, but as with any activity, there's the vernacular that goes along with it, the jargon, the lexicon of being a freaking nerd, right? With poker, you might say something like, oh yeah, I had cowboys, but that jerk river to flush on me on the river. Ugh. Doesn't mean anything to people who don't play poker. Perhaps you play StarCraft, and you say, yeah, well, he hid an expansion up in the top right, and because it's tall to Alter, I really thought that was way too risky, and they ended up beating me with a three base all in anyways, like an idiot. Doesn't mean anything. Same thing with magic. Firing a draft. What does firing a draft mean? It sounds like Case has a gun. Where drafts are bullets. What I soon found out is that he was playing Magic the Gathering online, and I was kind of curious what it is that that meant. Because I think like any person who's involved in gaming, whether it be computer games, console games, or board games, um, has been indeed aware of Magic the Gathering at some point in time. I played it way back when I was in sixth grade and found myself to be cool. I really did want to be a powerful wizard, not in a metaphoric sense, but literally I thought that that would be a reasonable career path, and I played Magic. But since then I hadn't played, and I started to watch him play. And he started to introduce to me all the things that are Magic the Gathering. I started to get more and more into it. He played nothing but drafts. I don't care if you don't know what that means, but that's all he did. And Case was a freaking badass. His limited rating was 1950. Oh my god. Now there's people out there who are like, what does that mean? Case was a big swinging dick. That's what it means, right? That's like someone who can bench press a building. He is unbelievably freaking good, right? And the funny thing about Case is that Case is the most relaxed, chill, not excitable person ever. You'd be like, Case, I want a million dollars. That seems good. That'll uh, certainly help out. And when you ask Case things, in particular, when I ask Case stupid questions, he would talk right at me. He wouldn't talk over or below, he would just tell me. Have you ever had a teacher who's like, there's no such thing as stupid questions, and then you raise your hand and you ask a question, and your teacher makes you feel like an idiot who shames you? Well, Sean, if you did the reading last night, you'd have an answer for yourself there. And then there's a stop, and, and the kids in class, they do this. You're at the back, and the kids go... They look back at you like, oh, holy shit, you just got called out by the teacher. Oh, coach just called you out. Everyone in high school's coach, right? Especially if you live in America. Everyone has had that experience where there's always a such thing as stupid questions, but not with Case. No matter how dumb a question I would ask, Case would just give me an answer. And I was like, okay, I'm starting to understand this. And eventually, in the summer, I started to take up playing myself. In June, I was playing drafts, and I was like, Ugh! Ugh! I was like doing the double uncoordinated fist pump of celebration because I myself was no longer a powerful wizard observer. I was a powerful wizard myself. I was awful. I was just, I was like an embarrassment to wizardry. They, don't, they didn't even want to sell me the hat and the robe. I was just some guy playing, but I, I really enjoyed myself. It was really fun, drastically differently from StarCraft. Um, 
And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And all of a sudden, we find out, leading up into the uh, the weekend that has just passed, onto October 13th and 14th, is that right? October 13th and 14th, yeah. That there was going to be a tournament in San Jose. And I decided, <laughs> let's do it! With a giant fist of decisiveness, I was going to go to my first ever Magic the Gathering tournament. And I had talked to my friend Tristan about this a lot. Now, if you've ever watched anything that has to do with me under any circumstance, you know that I have a friend Tristan, who's like the smartest person. Like, if he's had a, a cup of coffee, he can move tiny objects with his mind. He's fucking brilliant, right? I've been talking to Tristan about it, and I was like, maybe we should go to this tournament. It's a special kind of tournament. This is where I need to stop and I need to snip through in the storytelling and I need to introduce the tournament format. There's a number of ways to play Magic. Again, I described it as your cards are the ingredients and your deck is the recipe. You mix them all together in a certain way and you play with that. Now there's there's two broad categories of playing. There's one's constructed, which is where you plan in advance what recipe you're going to bring. Imagine it like a cook-off where they just say, hey, you're just going to make the best thing you can. So you just prepare and you think, what cards do I want in my deck? You, you adjust, maybe play with your friends, pull some cards out, put some cards in. Same thing as pulling ingredients out, putting new ones in. Maybe a little more salty because who doesn't like a salty deck? Mmm. You do those adjustments, and the tournament is the final judgment of whether all your adjustments have been correct. You bring that deck there. I don't like this so much because I don't like that whole process leading up. I'm low on time. I have business in eSports, so I totally don't quite have the time. And also, it requires some money to be able to buy exactly what you need. The other kind, the other broad category, is limited. This is what I like. I like limited. <clears throat> limited is where they hand you the cards right there, and you make a deck with the cards that you have been handed, and you play all on the spot. Have you ever watched Iron Chef? Where they're like, oh, Full quiz on! Today, they will be making ingredients out of cod row. And everyone's like, oh, What's a cod row? And then they desperately try to make it. That's what limited is like. So you have to make the trade-off where you look, and you're like, Well... These cards, there's like a couple great, a couple good, and mostly bad. How do I make the right mix of that? Now this is where I'm going to introduce some numbers. I, I, I have majored in mathematics, and I know that for every equation you bust out, you're going to cut your audience in half. But that's okay, because I know you, and I know you love numbers. In a normal limited format, there's a number of uh, different kinds of limited under that umbrella, but one kind of, uh, of, of limited format is called sealed. You get six packs that are unopened. They are sealed packs. See what I did there? I brought in the language. You get these six packs of cards, and, you, and each one has 15 cards. And you'll notice that six times 15 is oftentimes 90. You take these 90 cards and you're going to boil it down to 23. That's what a deck is. 23 spells, 17 land for a 40 card deck. Ooh, That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Now keep in mind, there's five freaking colors. There's 20 to 25 in each color. You're trying to squeeze it down to 23. You might, here's a conversation that goes on in your head, or at least goes on in my head. I don't know if I'm representative of most powerful wizards, but what goes on in my head is I'm like, okay, okay, my white is really good. My white's good, so I know I'm gonna play white. My black and my blue suck. So I'm either gonna be white and green or white and red. You know what, I think my red's the best. So I'm gonna have these 15 white cards, I'm gonna have these seven red cards. Good, I'm done, I'm done. And now, I have made my recipe. I have made my red white quiche. And I'm ready to unleash it on the other opponents. Ready to smack them down. Here's the format that was played 
at this tournament. This is what totally tickles my fancy and what hardens my nipples, either because it's cold or because I like this format. And it's one of those two. You show up to the event with two buddies. So there's three of you right there. In each round, I play one person of the other team, Case plays one person of the other team, and Tristan plays one person of the other team. And if we win that, we got it. But how is the deck made? We collectively get 12 packs of cards, 180 cards, and we make three decks out of that. Now, there's five colors in Magic the Gathering to choose from, and five divided by three? No one knows what that is. That's fuck that's not a real thing. Five divided by three, you have some you have some troubles, right? Maybe, maybe person person one has colors A and B, and person two has colors C and D, and person three has E and whatever. Right? They just had to have like another thing. You have to figure it out. Now, this is where I need to introduce what we call the characters of a story. Every story should have characters, shouldn't they? We've introduced this format. It's important to note that there's some struggle when trying to create just the right decks before you begin to play. Good. Here are the characters. Tristan. Tristan is actually the smartest person that I have ever met in my life and will ever meet in my life. He is an incredibly articulate speaker. You hand him something, he'll figure it out very swiftly. He's an absolute sweetheart. He has two cats named Edgar and Sabin. Yes, after the characters in Final Fantasy VI. Anything he touches, he immediately excels at. He plays the piano, writes a lot, uh, works at a really badass freaking company, is a Masters level StarCraft player, and a high-rated, limited Magic the Gathering player. I have no end of things to say about Tristan. And end of good things to say about Tristan. That's something to emphasize. Tristan is freaking smart. Tristan is Tristan is a lot of man. He is six foot five. He towers over me. He has this big beard and he has these glasses, and you can see he's calculating everything. He's the sort of man who, given any circumstance, would be sitting in a convention hall figuring out how to avoid the zombie apocalypse if it did land, and when the zombie apocalypse happens, you turn to him and say, what do we do? And he would have an answer that would work. This is the man we're talking about, all right? And he has two cats named Edgar and Sabin, who are sweethearts. Great. Case. Case is the shortest of us all at like 5'9 or something like that. I'm 6'3, Tristan's 6'5. Um, or maybe 6'6. Six, six. Case. His name is Case. C A C C A S E. Look, I don't know how to spell. I was a math major. Numbers, not letters, alright? Case. A little shorter than we are. Very sort of, hmm, hmm. Kind of the eyes of what I would describe as a judgmental parent. And yet still, any question you ask Case, he's going to be an amazing sweetheart, and he's going to say it to you exactly the way that you understand it, and he's going to stop and wait and make sure. He's going to take those steps to be absolutely certain that you get what he's talking about, but also Case is a killer. A cold-blooded, freaking stony-faced murderer in card games. I kid you not, Case is probably the best player in the world at Legend of the Five Rings. It's another card game. I don't know if you've heard of it or not. But Case is the man. In fact, in community sites where there's a forum that's like, look who won the recent tournament. You know, and it's like, congratulations, Jerry. Congratulations, Jimmy. His congratulations, Case, his thread is stickied because he wins them all, right? It's right there. Freaking badass. And then there's me. One big fucking liability. And we decide that we're going to form a team. That is who we are. Case, the brilliant, almost 2,000 rated, limited player who could construct decks in his sleep. Every time I see Case trying to construct decks in magic, I feel like I'm watching some Greek god sculpt species before me, where he's like, hmm, perhaps an alligator. And there it is, an alligator. And I'm like, whoa! Or maybe a chicken. And I'm like, 
oh my god, you know how to make everything case. His brain is amazing. Tristan is not quite at Case's level in terms of the deck construction and the play, but Tristan's good. So they're having conversation, they're like figuring stuff out. This is how I'm on Skype calls with them, and I'm there, and I'm like... I... Th Can... Are you gonna win, Case? Serious, I have, I've literally been unable to figure out however to make a con contribution in conversation, but I try because I don't like that feeling of insecurity. So we, we three decide that we are gonna play in the Magic the Gathering Grand Prix. The genius, the scholar, and the liability. So we decide we're gonna do this, it's time to go. It's Thursday night. I've just finished up a Day 9 Daily. I've just had a week of feeling amazing in StarCraft. If you watch that old Thursday Daily, like my brain was on, I was speaking clearly, my play was crisp in StarCraft 2. And I decided I was going to drive up to Tristan's. He lives in San, uh, Palo Alto, so it's about a five hour drive. So I leave after the Daily, and I'm driving, and I'm like, all right, cool. <sighs> We're gonna do this, we're gonna get this done, yeah! I'm like thinking about magic, I'm listening to the Jack Reacher stories on audiobooks. I don't know if you've ever listened to Jack Reacher before, but those, this cold tone of a man who can only be described as the Jack Bauer of books, narrating to me horrific things, bodies found in the snow, he's snapping necks, he's sipping coffee, everything described in this stern tone. And I'm just letting this amp me up in terms of Magic the Gathering. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna torture my opponents. I'm gonna brutalize them. And I'm gonna cut them with switchblades and it'll be tough. And then I get into Tristan's house at 4 a.m., go to bed on his floor, and I'm kept up most of the nights because his adorable cats keep rubbing my feet. And this is where I actually should probably stop and explain to you that I don't even know how to fantasize about Magic the Gathering. I'm that bad. I know how I fantasize about StarCraft. Let me give an example. There are times when I sit in bed and I imagine being in the StarCraft tournament and I never miss a probe and I never miss a pylon and every time he tries to drop me I see it on the mini-map and I go over there and I swashbucklingly pierce his medevac and it falls to the ground and I hear the roar of the crowd but I'm not distracted. I'm bad ass. My, my blood is dark and cold of oil, right? I'm, there's no sweat on my face, my eyes dead, looking at the screen, making perfect decisions. The temperature of the air doesn't matter. I've turned off the senses of the ears. I have no taste, no touch. I only see what I need to do and do it perfectly. I destroy my opponent 4-0 in the finals. Who did I defeat? The best player in the world. I stand out and the crowd is cheering. Yeah! And I'm like, I am day nine. And MVP turns and looks at me. He tries to shake my hand. I puke right into his eyes. He's, oh, he's running and the crowd is clapping as I'm vomiting on the best player in the world. And then I wake up and I'm like, I could do that. I could, yeah. I am the best StarCraft player in the world. But... With magic, I don't even know what to think. I'm like a guy with a crush who's eight years old. When I had a crush on someone when I was eight, I would fantasize about telling her my strats and games. And that's why no one can really beat me in Command and Conquer. Oh, Sean, you're so amazing. Wow, I didn't realize the power of Brotherhood of Nod. Oh, well, you know, a lot of people have never really thought it through, but you know, I'm always thinking, Missy Saucy Pants. And that was the ex that was actually the height of my fantasy back then. And that's how I thought about magic. All right? I'm sitting in there and I'm like, maybe I draw well? Maybe he draws bad. Do I have better cards? Do I surprise him? Maybe I don't surprise him. God, I hope I win. Do I win? I hope I win. No, let's, 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 let's pretend I win. I'm turning into one of those like people who's trying to solve a math problem but hasn't hit the answer yet. Suppose I win. What do I say to him when I win? I don't want to be a dick. I guess I'll shake his hand. 
I'll tell Case. Well, I want Twist in there too. I can't say it loud. And I'm going through all these branches and then I just fall asleep. Is that not the most sad, pathetic fantasy you've ever heard? I'm trying to figure out how to envision my victory over the best of the best. And I freaking pass out. I awaken the next morning to Tristan's cats rubbing against my feet. Edgar is so cute. Sabin terrified of vacuum cleaners. Edgar terrified of people. But a foot? Edgar loves foots. I wake up. I'm feeling good. Tristan and I decide it's time to drive down to San Jose to register for the Grand Prix. We go up to this convention hall, and when we enter, it's a room unlike everything... Uh, uh, Unlike, sure, unlike everything I've ever seen. Unlike anything I've ever seen. I enter this convention hall. At, at the south end is the judges area. Where they have all the judges. There's, there's millions of them. Millions of judges. At the north end is the registration. Along the east and west sides are booths set up for people to trade cards. And in the center are thousands of tables and thousands of chairs laid out. It was like entering a Roman Colosseum two days before the match. And you see all the dust still lying there. Look, if you want a realistic portrayal, go watch somewhere else. This is my fucking story, alright? All the tables laid out, ready for thousands of powerful wizards to battle against one another. And I've never been there before. I've never been to anything like... I'm, I've been to land centers where you see tons of reassuring blue light emitting from monitors on all the walls. These are just tables out there. And I go to register. I hand them my credit card. They say, we don't accept credit cards. Cash only. And I'm like, oh my god. The Magic the Gathering registration areas are tough people. They only take cash like they're drug dealers or street vendors or parking lot attendants. It's time to go get some money from the ATM. I withdraw it, give him the money. 120 up front. Count out the 20s. Excuse me, I count out the 20s. Let me make sure I have my image accurate. Me and Tristan register. We're finally signed up. I get a mat, I get a pin. I don't know where the pin is, I lost it. But I got one. And then it's time for me to go off to San Francisco. I had some buddies I was going to hang out with during the day, including none other than Kevin Lin, the Chief Operating Officer of Twitch TV, the platform that you're likely watching on right now. We played an epic best of 13 or so. I lost. It stung. But it was close. Every round was over two minutes long. And I finally started to drive back down to Tristan's house. Case was going to be there. I hadn't seen him all day. Case was going to bring cards. We have to figure out how are we going to prepare for this Magic the Gathering tournament. We know that we're going to get 12 packs. We have to distribute those. We have to divvy them up among three players. Um, but but how, do we, how do we practice that environment? Case was going to bring cards. So we sit down. Case actually has uh, 36 packs. We can practice three times what it's like. It's 10 p.m. when we get there. We know we got to be in bed by midnight, and I'm nervous. See, in StarCraft II, I have control at all points in time. I always know that I have control. If I want to take that expansion, I can send a worker there. I can begin making units to take the expansion. I can scout around and check out everything that's going to be going on around there, see if he has anything that can threaten me. I can do things. In Magic, you just, you're just like, well, I'm going to draw a card. I have no idea what it'll be. I guess I better wait till that turn comes around. It stresses me out! I'm like a wreck. I'm driving there. I'm like, Case, what do we do? Oh, i got to figure this out. So Case says, look, well, this is what we're going to do. When we open the decks, we're going to give you all the red and black, Sean. Because that's the easy deck to build. I'll take the white green Tristan's going to take the white blue and because Tristan and Case understand how to communicate without just having diarrhea over stress in the way I would they're going to figure out how to divvy up the white and we'll start from there and see how it goes so we do it we practice it through and I'm like okay okay and I'm like going through and I'm like dealing it out and I'm like Ugh. and to give you a sense of what this is like Case is the brilliant deck builder who's a great player. 
Tristan is the extremely competent magic player who can give feedback and discuss with Case, and I'm the liability. This is like having a SWAT team where Case is the sniper and team leader, Tristan is the one with the assault rifle who kicks in the door, and I'm the suicide bomber, right? I'm... Yeah, a SWAT team with a suicide bomber? Look, they needed somewhere for me to go, and that's the best thing I would be at. That's how we built our decks. So we had that practice that night before, and I was feeling really comfortable, and I was like, okay, I hope to God I get the good cards tomorrow. I hope to God I draw well. I don't give a shit if Tristan and Case have terrible cards. This is about me. I need anything to calm down. Whew. I go to bed that night with my twisted, confused, directionless fantasies because tomorrow is day one of the Grand Prix San Jose. When we come back after this break, we're going to hear how it started off. <laughs> 